I want to talk to you tonight about the power of prayer. One of the keys to multiplication, one of the keys to every revival is the power that comes from prayer. Now there's all types of prayer. The scripture speaks of the prayer of supplication. It speaks of the prayer of thanksgiving, the prayer of faith. But tonight, I want to take you into something that God taught me when I was a young man. The world of tongues. Something that taps into the heavens and changes atmospheres. It will change cities. It will change nations. Oh, I feel it. I feel it tonight. Hallelujah. You guys ready? Come on, you guys ready? We're going to blast off tonight. <clears throat> you are getting your breakthrough in your personal life. You are getting your breakthrough in your family. You are going to see answered prayers. We are going to see this city saved. Come on. We are going to see the greatest revival in the history of Florida. Hey, hey, hey. We are going to see the leaders of this nation bow through the power of our prayers. You know, last week when you called me up to pray a little bit, it felt so good having a little bit over 100 people, you know, at night service just whack that thing for a couple minutes. Smack that thing in the spirit. And you got heaven backing you up. And you got the world of tongues. This heavenly language that God has given all of us to be able to come into agreement. To unite our faith. And come in one spirit. In one name. His name is Jesus. In one belief. In one vision. In one voice. And you see the power of the anointing combined. The scripture says, one shall put a thousand to flight, two shall put ten thousand. What happens when a hundred people start to pray in tongues? The perfect language of heaven. When God begins to speak and all the dialects of the earth are combined into this heavenly language and his perfect will comes out. That's a beautiful thing. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that can shake prison doors open. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that can change the weather. I'm talking about the kind of prayer whoo, that can stop the sun. You see, we read about the prophets we read about men like Moses and Noah. We read about Abraham in the Old Testament. They did not have the gift that we have, and they still understood the power of prayer. We have a new and better covenant where the Holy Ghost lives in us. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The glory of the living God dwells in this very temple. In you and I, we are the temple. We are a mobile temple. We are a moving, living, breathing temple of God where the glory comes out, where His Word comes out, where the anointing comes out. And, and the more you yield <laughs> to being the temple, the more you give yourself to the Spirit of the living God, to the Holy Spirit in yielding, the more he's able to come out. You see, if you want to see a school saved, it's not just saved by talking. It's not just saved by preaching. It's not just saved by a kumbaya song. There must be something that saturates the territory, the school, the high school, the university, whatever it is, the business, the territory. You see, when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, something happens. And sometimes we don't even understand. 
Sometimes we can understand because when you start to get in the spirit, guess what happens? Your understanding is unfruitful, but if you get in tune with the Holy Ghost, you can even start to pray and interpret. You see, there, there's, a, there's a few battles in prayer. One is your flesh. The other is your head. You see, your flesh will say, I don't want to pray. Or here, I'll pray a little bit. Oh, praise God, hallelujah, I'm done. And your brain will be going, why am I doing this? Why am I praying like this? You know, sometimes when, when I'm reading the word or I'm preparing or, or if I'm doing something that's the work of the ministry, I'm thinking, I should be studying. And then God draws me into praying in the Holy Ghost. And before you know it, everything becomes clear. Before you know it, decision-making becomes easy. Before you know it, your flesh and your brain, your mind that's thinking about a million things starts to come clear and your total focus, spirit, soul, and body comes into line with the Lord and his will. Mm. Okay, I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you get something? <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> we're going to get into the Word a little bit, and then, uh, then I'm going to share a little bit more, and then we're going to pray. Now, I'm going to teach you um, something that was taught to me almost 40 years ago, something about praying through, something about what I call travail in prayer. Woo! Hallelujah. You like that, huh, Jesus? Come on. Go ahead, God. I know. I know. Mm. You hear that out there? That's a storm. Woo! <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18, and we'll start with verse 41. This passage of Scripture is about a prophet of God. His name's Elijah. He just finished calling down fire from heaven. That's always good to do. He just challenged all the false prophets. That's always good to do. He just watched God move. And he comes to a man named Ahab. Let's start in verse 41, and I'll start there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. You hear that rain out there? That's a good sign. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Caramel, not the candy, but the mountain. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. And he, sent, and he said to his servant, go up and look toward the sea. So we went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times Elijah said, go again. Then it came to pass on the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Woo, feel the anointing. Now it happened. In the meantime, that the sky became black, just like it's happening right now outside. With clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. Say heavy rain. It's kind of fun to talk about this with a storm going on overhead. It's like, come on, God, let's get an agreement. <laughs> come on, Jesus. Now, we hear about stories of great outpourings. You know, in church history, we've read about the revivals. Woo. In the last hundred years, we read about the revivals in the 1700s that birthed America because they got free of religion. They got free of 
Mother England. We're going to England in a week and a half. So I'm going to help some of those merry old Brits get free. Yep. But our nation was founded on outpouring and revival. And for the last 400 years, God's been moving in our nation. Can I say this? America is a nation of revival. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what Biden says. I don't care what the New World Order says. I don't care what they're trying to do. I don't care what the Antichrist says or the World Health Organization or the World Economic Forum or any other kind of world devil. This nation is a nation of revival. Hallelujah. This nation is a praying nation. We are a blessed nation. And it's going to stay that way until we wrap this thing up with the Lord and we see the greatest harvest harvest in the history of mankind in this nation, and then we're out of here. Hallelujah. Whew. Whew. Feel the anointing. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Let me just shout a little bit because I'm getting hit. Oh, hallelujah. You see, if we are going to see what we're believing for, there must be groundwork. There must be the taking of ground. Hmm. There must be saturation in the spirit. You see, there is principalities. There are principalities out there. Okay? They don't like you and I. They've been around for a long time. And they don't like what we're talking about. They don't like what's going on in Florida. They don't like any church that's breaking through. But that's just too bad. Because we have weapons of warfare where we can take him down. I'm going to tell you a few stories. Oh. There's an, there's, there's an anointing on that thunder growling up there. There's an anointing on the rain that's hovering over us right now. I wouldn't be surprised if some might... Happening here. Cloud comes in and begins to rain and starts to talk to us. I'll take it. Hallelujah. Whew. Mm. You see, Elijah. Okay, Father. Okay, Father. Elijah was a man that prayed. The scripture says that his servant didn't see it, but the prophet did. He said, I don't see anything. Go back again and 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 again. Go back. Well, Elijah prayed. He didn't pray once. He prayed seven times. And then something happened. A cloud came. A cloud came. Now I'm looking for that cloud. I'm looking for that cloud of glory. Now in the Old Testament, this is prophetic description for what's taking place in the new. The cloud, the rain, the lightnings, the thunders, the wind. Mm. I, I wait, wait, just stop. I love that you're doing this right now, God. Okay, okay, now I'll go back to preaching. He wants to do something on a massive scale. <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> he wants to do something so big that it blows your mind.
38 years ago, I was just a kid. I was 18. I went up into the mountains of California with my Aunt Margie. And she discipled me. I got off drugs. I had a calling since I was 10 years old. God called me to be a preacher. Kenneth Hagin prophesied over me. Ralph Wilkerson prophesied over me. Woo. Hagen said that I was going to preach to the masses. Ooh. And at 18 years old, I got right. I went through some bumps and some dumps, and I had some hardship. I ended up homeless in a cardboard box on the side of a church called of God. I started working for a church, 1985. I was the cleaner. My pastor gave me the keys to the church. I'd go in, I'd mop the floors, I'd clean the, the bathrooms on the Saturday before the Sunday services. I'd vacuum the sanctuary, I'd pray in tongues for four hours praying, vacuuming. I learned something. I was so hungry for God that I wanted to know him. And the only way I could find him was through communion and prayer. I used to go on to Monday night prayer with about 30, 40 little old ladies and another guy that was 10 years older than me. We would go and we'd start at seven and we'd end about 10. And I encountered the power of God. I encountered the world of tongues. I encountered something that was beyond the natural. I would pray, and then these women would begin to groan. And it sounded like they were having babies, and they were laboring. And I was like, what the heck is this? I said, I don't know, but it's cool. And these grandmas would lay hands on me, and they'd pray over me. And I'd just cry in tongues and shake under the power of God. And, and I'd begin to start to groan in the spirit. And I started to learn something. It was called the art of intercession of prayer. We went on a missions trip to a church where the pastor was a prayer man. He was a praying man. His name was David Young E. Cho. We went and fasted and prayed on Prayer Mountain. I was 18 years old on a missions trip. What are we doing? What? We're not eating. For how many days? Four days. Where are we staying? They had these little tiny cubicles, like smaller than like a little trailer. And you would go in there with a big bottle of water and stay in there and pray. Everybody had these little cubicles up on the mountain. And we'd pray, pray in tongues. Then we have morning prayer, and then you get to have some hot water, flavored water. And then in the afternoon, we would pray in tongues. And the funny thing is, there were Koreans that didn't speak English. And then there were Americans that spoke English. But we had this thing in common. We were able to pray in tongues. And I had the privilege of spending a night in prayer with David Young E. Cho's mother. I went into the sanctuary. It was 10 o'clock. She was in there praying. She didn't speak English. She had an interpreter. I said, hello. We said, I said, can I pray with you? She said, I started to pray. We prayed from 10 a.m. to sunrise. And I learned something. I learned how to birth in the spirit. I learned how to grab a hold of God at the altar. That woman had my shoulder and cried before the Lord. <laughs> well, I was shaking and crying. And I was seeing things. I was and I was crying in tongues. And I began to see visions for our church. 
I began to see visions for that era in the 80s. That woman called me up the next day in the main service. Talked to pastor, had it interpreted, got me up there and had me share what God showed me all night long. And I was Joshua's age, 18 years old. That was pretty much the first time I almost ever, yeah, that was the first time I ever spoke. I spoke in this big tent to all these people that have been praying for three days. And I shared the visions of the Lord for the church. And I shared the visions of what God was doing and what he wanted to do in that territory and in the world. And I pretty much feel like that was my ordination into the calling of a prophet. Now, my Aunt Margie, she spoke to me and said I'd be a house of prayer. I went and prayed with the little grandmas. Then I got to pray with the grandma, Youngie Cho's mom. Now, if you don't know anything about Cho's church, it's in Seoul, Korea. At that time, it was the largest church in the world. It was 800,000 people with 200,000 visitors a week. That's a big church. Now, if you hear about what's going on in Nigeria with Bishop David Oyedepo, they say that he has 6 million people in his church. Now, that's a harvest. This rain isn't stopping, is it? I'm okay with it, Jesus. Go ahead. Could be a sign. Cho would make statements like, I pray and I obey. He said he wouldn't start off his day without three, four hours of prayer. He made statements like this about his church, the largest church in the world. 800,000 people, he said. He said, American preachers, they preach long and pray little. In my church, we preach little, just a scripture in the word or two, and we pray long. And we believe that the harvest comes through much prayer. He said, if the great preaching leaves our church, our church will continue. If the administration of pastoral care leaves our cell network, the church will still continue. And then he said, but if our prayer in our church stops, our church will discontinue. One of the greatest keys to seeing growth in the church is prayer. I've seen revival break out. And it's always come from an increase of prayer. People will decide to fast and pray and they'll yield themselves to God and they'll humble themselves before the God and the scripture says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will turn from their wicked ways, if they will repent of their sin, <laughs> if they will seek my face, he said, I will come. <laughs> Say, I will come. That's what he said he would do. I will come. And I will forgive their sin. Ah. And I will heal their land. That's a revival scripture. Ha. Hallelujah. I could tell a praying man, a praying woman. I could tell. 
At times in my life, I would pray three, and Caroline knows this, I would pray three to four hours a day. I would finish my day, and I'm, I'm going to go pray. I'll see you in three, four hours. I remember we'd go out at night. I'd pray till one, two in the morning. Now, I don't get down on my knees and pray. Because I know if I get down on my knees and pray, my flesh is going to want to fall asleep. So I'll pace the full floor, or I'll get in the car, and I'll go drive for three, four hours, and I don't care how much the gas costs. I'll go drive for two, three hundred miles, praying in tongues. I'll drive around whole cities five, six, seven times, praying in tongues, blasting in the spirit, fervent in the spirit. You see, when Elijah prayed, he prayed and the rain stopped for three and a half years. And then he prayed again. He was just a regular man, the scripture says. In James 5, he talks about he, he was just a man, just like you and I, with like nature. And he prayed again and the rain broke loose. Oof. How many of you guys want to see the rain break loose? How many of you guys want to see the outpouring that you've been believing for? Come on. Are you here? Yeah. Amen. Then we're going to pray. And we're going to pray 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 and we're going to see breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. I value my prayer life. When I wake up in the morning, everyone's asleep in my house, I pray. Whew. That's when I get the clearest information from God. That's when he speaks to me. If it's late at night, I try to pray in the house, I'll fall asleep. I'll pray in the afternoon. Today I prayed in the afternoon for about an hour. Just prayed in tongues. He said, well, Rob, do you pray in understanding? Oh, yes, I do. I will pray in understanding and I'll pray in my tongues that I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm praying the perfect will of God. The scripture says that when you pray in tongues, it'll build up your most holy faith. It strengthens your faith. I remember... When I grabbed a hold of intercession and I started to pray, I had a, I, my prayer life was on. And, and people, people ask me, how do you see and hear so clear? My answer is I pray. I pray and get in tune with the Holy Ghost. Woo. I remember praying with my friend that used to go to prayer meeting with me, and he and I were praying one time together. We were laying on the, on the ground praying in tongues. And I got a vision. I got a vision of a missionary in Africa while I was praying. He's praying next to me. We're not talking to each other. And he says, I just got a vision. I said, what of? He said, a missionary in Africa. And I responded, I said, he's about to get killed. And he goes, yeah, I saw them wanting to chop his head off. We began to pray and pray and pray and pray until what the old timers call praying through. That means that we had a burden in our heart that we saw something in the spirit. And we began to pray. No, he will not die. Loose him and let him go free. He shall live. Freedom to him in Jesus' name. We prayed and prayed and prayed. And when you're praying, sometimes you'll feel this burden in the spirit. And you can't let it go. I've had that for people at times. Where I just got to pray. And pray and pray and pray until something happens where it's like, whoa, yeah, ah, 
die and it feels like I'm having a baby. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> and I feel the presence of peace and joy begins to bubble up. The joy of the Lord hits me and I begin to laugh and laugh and laugh because I know that something happened to the spirit. I got it in the spirit. Well, we go to church the next day. And lo and behold, the pastor starts to talk about one of the missionaries from the church in Africa that was about to get killed and God delivered them. That blew my mind. I'm like, we're on to something here. My whole life has been this, this thing where God draws me to prayer until I see whew, the power come, the breakthrough come. I'm in a war. Everybody's in a war. You're praying for something. Maybe you're praying for your loved ones. Maybe you're praying for your son or your daughter. Maybe you're praying for your brother or your sister or that friend at work. And there's a burden. And you know that person needs to get saved. You know that person needs to come right. You know that prodigal needs to come home. You know that that person that's on their way to hell needs to get saved. Just imagine if every one of us in this room began to pray and zone in on that one or that two or that five or that ten. And we begin to pray and go after that in the spirit until we see them delivered, set free, and on fire. Just imagine if we begin to pray for that university up the road and we saturate it in prayer and we prophesy over that in the anointing. You know, sometimes when you're praying in tongues, all of a sudden the interpretation will come and you'll begin to pray in your understanding and it's like a prophecy. It's like the prophetic declaration of the Lord. And all of a sudden you're speaking like you're prophesying and it's just the interpretation of the tongue. Woo! Jesus. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, in our infirmities. For we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit, say Spirit, Himself prays for us with groanings too deep for words. I've been in meetings. I did a, past, a pastor's conference in, in China. Nobody spoke English except one person, my interpreter. We had pastors that represented 250,000 home group churches. These people have seen the dead raised over and over again. I taught them on prayer. Whew. We prayed for eight hours in a little room without air condition. About 60 of us pastors. And the cloud came. And then I heard somebody praying and singing in English from across the room. And they were singing how great God was and how awesome is he was and how they were worshiping him. And I told my buddy, I said, why didn't you tell me somebody else spoke English here? I haven't been able to talk to nobody for three days here. And he goes, she doesn't speak a word of English. There's a story of a, a woman of God named Billy Brim. Do you guys know who Billy Brim is? Billy Brim was praying with a few pastors. One of them was an Arabic pastor. They were all on a Zoom call, and they were praying together. 
They were praying in the Holy Ghost. They were all praying in tongues. And Billy Brim started to pray in this tongue. And after she was done, the Arabic pastor said, I didn't know you spoke Arabic. She said, I don't. She said, well, it sure sounded like it to me because you were saying, the victory is done, the victory is done, the victory is done in his mighty name. She was speaking in tongues and the Arabic language was coming out and it was ministering to the Arabic pastor and he interpreted it and they started shouting over Zoom because the victory was done and the interpretation in the tongue came out like that. Don't underestimate God. Don't underestimate your prayer language. You grab a hold of this thing, you'll be praying in tongues day and night. Paul said it this way, I pray in tongues more than you all. I pray more than you all. Don't stop praying in tongues. Don't cease to pray in tongues. Pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. I taught this over and over again to churches. The last 38 years I've taught this. I've taught it to the youth where we have young people, 13, 14, 15, 16, praying, praying in tongues. You young people, it's a good time to start having a prayer life. Isn't it a good time to start having a prayer life? How about you old folks? Is it a good time to start praying again like never before? I remember I taught this to our youth group, and we'd pray. These kids would pray until fire came. You know, the scripture says, out of your belly, whoo, will flow rivers of living water. <laughs> that river that flows, that bubbles up out of you and flows. The scripture says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That word fervent means boiling over, bubbling over. <sighs> you have a river inside of you. <laughs> that could flow all over the world in tongues. Hallelujah. Where your focus, spirit, soul, and body, and you begin to pray fervently, wholeheartedly, and you get out of your flesh in the laziness and the comfort of your flesh, and you get out of your head and stop thinking about food and stop thinking about how you just want to chill and do something else, and you focus in wholly on God, and you begin to pray. <laughs> and God begins to use you as a powerhouse. Where God begins to use you as a weapon. <laughs> as an arrow in the hand of the Father. Whoosh! Mm. I taught this youth group, taught them how to pray. And they had an opportunity to go to Africa on a missions trip, just like that missionary that was over there in Africa. These kids went over there, and they were out doing missions work, and they were saving people and praying for people, and they were getting healed, you know, and they were having, they were having outdoor meetings, and they were going for it. Until all of a sudden, one of the 14-year-old little African kids dropped dead in the meeting. No breath. Dead in the dirt. And one of the young men, he remembered what I said. He said, I heard your words. Pray through. Don't stop until you pray through. 
So these young people, they started praying in tongues. They surrounded this little 14-year-old kid about the size of my daughter. Just They showed me pictures. And they began to pray and pray and pray and pray, and they didn't stop. One hour goes by, nothing. Two hours go by, nothing. Three hours, nothing. A dead corpse. But in their spirits, they knew this isn't done. They kept praying in tongues, crying out, groaning and travailing, birthing in the spirit. And on the fourth hour, that child coughed and started breathing again. Mm. Come on. Mm. What I'm talking about is a key to revival. What I'm talking about is a key to multiplication. What I'm talking about can save the masses and bring great revival. You wonder why these preachers in Nigeria carry such authority. Because all they do is fast and pray. And when they speak, they sound like a lion. With authority, they roar. When I was a young man, my favorite preachers were from Africa. I used to love Pastor Io because he would preach with fire and authority. That exorciso strength of God that broke everything in the spirit in the room. Caused devils to shake in terror. Caused sickness and disease to be driven out. You see, there's rankings in the spirit. And there's also a graduation into heaven one day. What you learn on earth will be your age in heaven. My wife Caroline, earlier this year, she read her Bible, the entire book, in 89 days. And I said, why do you want to do this? She goes, because if Jesus is coming back, I want to know this whole thing before he gets here. I need to read it again. She broke her foot. We went through a trial. She read four, five, six hours a day while I was out driving in my car, praying in tongues, believing for a miracle, believing for breakthrough. But we didn't back down. We just kept on going. And we have other wars we're fighting, and we're going to win. But you know what? I'm not going to let the devil take my joy. I'm not going to let the devil take my peace. I'm not going to let the devil take my faith. And you know what? I'm going to take some ground. How about somebody in this room take some ground tonight? How about somebody in this room get your breakthrough in your family? How about somebody in this room see a revival? How about somebody in this room raise the dead? Come on, somebody. How about somebody let that river flow out of your belly and let it give drink to everyone around you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about you go up in the ranks of authority in the spirit world? Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? They need to know you. They need to know you. Hallelujah. 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 Speaking in my office tonight. You go ahead and sit down.
The reason why we have fluffy, weak churches is because we don't have prayer. The reason why we have fluffy, weak preachers is because we don't have prayer. The reason why we have politically correct preachers is because we don't have prayer. Because there's something happens when you pray. The spirit of conviction falls on you. Where God begins to deal with the workings of the heart. Where God begins to deal with the pride. Where God begins to deal with the sin. Where he starts to say you need to get it out. You need to clean it up. You need to have a clean vessel and clean eyes. I've had to repent. How about you? And if you said, no, nah, you need to repent tonight. <laughs> but the scripture says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and come and forgive their sin and heal their land. Are you getting this? We're in the last days. If we were ever at a time in life that we should be praying, it's now. My God. Thank you that the rain stopped. You know what I'm talking about? It's also a key to intimacy with Jesus. When you begin to pray, and it's that prayer of his perfect will, and the spirit begins to take you over, you just draw close to Jesus, and you want to see him. You want to know him. Can I say this? Your flesh does not want to pray. Your mind is enmity with this until you renew it and you put on the mind of Christ. Can I say this? When Jesus started his ministry, he didn't start having miracle meetings on top of some hill. He didn't start preaching to the masses. You know what he did? At the age of 10, when he came into his manhood or his bar mitzvah as a Jewish young boy, he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for 20 years. And then when he became 30, he came out. The scripture says that he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he prayed. The enemy came and tempted him in every way, and also angels came down and ministered to him. But the scripture says something that's so wonderful, so powerful, that if we can get this, it'll change you in the way you see life. It'll change you in, in, in the way you see ministry. He came out of that place with power. Now, I love the anointing. And you can operate it with, you can operate in the anointing without prayer. Did you know that? I love miracles. And you can operate in miracles without prayer. You can operate in healings without prayer, and you can cast out demons without prayer. Hmm. Is that true? The scripture says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. But with prayer, it's like the kerosene on the gifts. It's like the kerosene, the oil with a spark that causes a fire. 
people. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up your hands and thank him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And yes, amen, this house will be a house of prayer. And it will increase and increase and increase and increase. And the fire will burn and the river will flow. And the river will flow out of the sanctuary and it'll hit you at the ankles and it'll hit you at the knees and it'll hit you at the waist. And that river will become so strong that you won't be able to do anything except swim in it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, everybody, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in that tongue. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Let the Holy Ghost possess you. Let him take over your hands. Let him take over your legs. Let him take over your eyes and your ears. Let him take over your mouth and your tongue. Sombra baba le farindo ho Come on take it up another notch mesha da la vara manda Sonda la baraka la la Come on we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost Try praying for a few minutes Try praying for 5 10 minutes where you don't run out of gas Yeah your flesh will start to get tired after about 5 10 minutes and then you'll break through. It's just like running. You're running. I can't do this. I can't do this. All of a sudden, you get that wind of the Spirit, and you begin to pray, and it's easy. And then you get in the Spirit, and one, two, three hours go by, and you're like, I want more of this. Woo! Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice, and don't hold nothing back. Like a shout in the Holy Ghost, Masantashi, Zondoro Soko Vahasahande, Mendashi Zoso, fervent prayer, boiling prayer, bubbling over, river flowing out prayer, Mantaka fire prayer, let that fire come out of your belly, Masakarika, Esuntarabaha, Rosso Corre Mamba Base Keteteha, Russo, Esoja Zizo. Oh, so Jesus, so total basa, sandala barenzo dera braha, rumba halera dera braha. Every weed out, every weed out of the garden, every weed out of the harvest. Mashakala la la so sombra halala ba. Fertile soil, we take ground and we make it fertile soil. Mantakarika ta 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 ta. We plow up the fallow ground. Macho toto braha. We sow seeds of deliverance and blessing and revival and souls being one. We sow healing power into the territory. We sow miracles and signs and wonders into the ground. Masakarika ha ha. Hallelujah. The heavens to open and God to come down. 
Thank you, Father. Oh, bring it forth, Holy Ghost, Dante Shika. Oh, we pray for a great revival over the nation of America. We pray for a great revival to sweep through the nations. We release the fire. We release the river. We release that anointing. Hallelujah. Masaka re he he he. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sake, varidinda basuala. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Shaka la la barrim. Wah, sweep through the land, I pray. We call on the angels. Masako re maha. Do the bidding of the sons of and daughters of God. Masaka la la. Assist us and help us in what we are to do on the earth. Makasakarindi. You feel that? You guys are feeling that? You guys feel that? You feeling that? That breaking through? Masakarita ta 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 ta. Rosso corre maha ta 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 se. Hallelujah. That's where you start to go above only and not beneath. That's where you start to see the blessed coming in and the blessed going out. That's where you see the land begin to prosper. There's a scripture that says, Hear, O land, hear, O land, hear the word of the Lord. Hear, O land, hear, O land, hear the word of the Lord. Come on, just lift up your hands. Come on. Let that breakthrough come, Father. Let that breakthrough come for every person in this room. Let that breakthrough come for their families and their friends. Let that breakthrough come, Father. Oh, Father, we ask and we thank you in advance. We ask and we thank you in advance by faith. We call those things done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. I feel it. Mm. I want the men of this church, I want all the men to get up here right now. I'm charging you and calling you to be men of prayer tonight. And then I'm going to call all the women. I want these men up here. I want you to commit to God. I want you to say yes to prayer. That all of you men are going to become intercessors and houses of prayer. You're going to pray for your families. You're going to pray for your loved ones. You're going to pray, 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 pray. The mighty men of war. You are the mighty men of war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strength in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all right. I like it. I like it. Just lift up your hands, man. Just lift up your hands. The anointing's falling. That anointing's falling. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. It's falling. I commission you tonight. I commission you tonight. I charge you tonight to pray. To become one with God. Ah. I declare the anointing. I declare the anointing. I declare the anointing. Ooh, call them deep, deep, deep calls on the team. Take it. Take that. Power to pray. Pray, pray, pray and seek the face of God. Pray, pray, pray and seek the face of God. Ooh. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. 
Increase and multiply it. Increase and multiply it. Let his ministry go into the masses in Jesus' name. Fire 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 to pray. Yeah. Let it go down in your belly. Oh, you pray. You're going to get it. Who doesn't pray in the Holy Ghost? Who doesn't have their prayer language yet? Let, let me see your hand. If there's anyone in the room you don't pray. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. We're going to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and get the prayer language in a little bit. Pray, 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 pray. Come here, brother. Come here. Look at me. Look at me. You can take this, right? You gonna run with it? Oh, you're gonna flex your spiritual muscles. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, the devil fears this stuff. Look at me. Look at me. Take it. Take that. Come on over here. Okay, come on up here. Okay, you're going to start to hear words, okay? They're not English, they're not Spanish. They're the language that you're hearing. Everybody has their own language, okay? So we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to give you that language, okay? You're going to start to hear those words in your mind. You're going to start to feel like, like warm and love and power in there, and it's going to feel real good. And as you do, those words in your mind, I want you to begin to speak them, and the Holy Spirit's going to give you your prayer language, and you're going to start to pray in the perfect will of God. Sometimes we don't know what to pray. We pray in English. Then we pray for our family. We pray for everybody else. But then God gave us this language where we can pray in this language His perfect will. And we don't understand the words, but God's praying through us. The Holy Spirit's praying through us. You ready? Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, fill them with that gift, I pray. Now begin to pray in that language. I'm going to pray with you. Come on, everybody. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Don't you go. I'm just praying in tongues. You're going to hear those few words and then say them out. You're going to have to say those words, and then more words will come. Soto la lavarita tata seketasa. Esa catesa. You hear those words? Nasaka la la. Okay, all the women. All you women, you want to start to pray like never before? Yeah? Okay, why don't you guys go ahead and line up in the back, okay? I'm going to pray for you. Caroline's going to help me. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to worship him and thank him for a breakthrough. I charge you and commission you tonight to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. For your prayer life to increase. Where the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God can pray through you. You feel that anointing? You feel that anointing? Come on, just lift up your hands and keep on praying in the Holy Ghost. 
There's fire in this room. This is impartation. My grandma used to lay hands on me. I'm praying tongues over me all the time. I almost died one night. I was out and I took LSD and I was on drugs. 16 years old, I was going to die. I went across the street in a big truck, 18 wheeler almost hit me. I freaked out, backed up. It swiped my body going about 45 miles an hour. It's going to kill me. I walked 10 miles home high on LSD. I walked into the, my grandma's house. And it was about almost 3, 4 in the morning. My grandma's sitting there rocking in her chair, praying in tongues. When I walked in, she said, the Holy Ghost told me that you were going to die tonight. And he woke me up and told me to pray for you. And I couldn't stop praying for you until you got home. This kind of prayer saved my life. I would have been a dead man at 16. My grandma didn't wake up and hear the Holy Ghost and pray through. We need to pray through for our kids. We need to pray through for our loved ones. We need to pray through for our husbands and our wives. Just, just stay with me, hon, and pray behind me. The impartation. The impartation, yep. Take that. Yep, yep. It goes in you. You take it all. That's it. Breathe in more. More, 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 more. Take it all. You feel that? It's going to cause you to shake right now. Take that. Take that. Let it go in you. Yep. Let it go in you. Let it go in you, sweetie. Not so cold. Take that. Let it go in you. You feel that? It's fire burning. It's going to fill up your heart with love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yep. Yep, we're going to see answered prayers. We are going to see answered prayers. We are going to see prodigals come home. We're going to see breakthrough on every side. Mm. Take it all. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's it. Take it all. Take it all. That's it. That's the anointing. Take it. Here you go, Eden. Take that. That's the Holy Ghost. Yep, you know it. That's it. Yeah, we're going to have joy. We're going to see joy and peace and breakthrough, and God's going to answer our prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's going to answer prayers. He's going to answer prayers. We're going to see God move. He's going to answer your prayers, sweetheart. Jesus. 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 Anybody that hasn't been prayed for, just jump in the aisle right over here. Just jump in the aisle right over here. Come up to the front. This night is a night of breakthrough. Come on up. Come on up if you haven't been prayed for. Come on up. Come on up. Masoko Pasha Tata Tate Alahan Henanamahan Nombasi Sombra Hatata Sukutoso Efalala and Dahara and Dahai feel the anointing. I feel the increase of the anointing. Masakare Tata 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 Tosha Kaza, Tosha Kaza, Tosha Kaza. Jesus' name. Just breathe in. Just breathe in. Take that. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, you got that, sweetie. Here, just step to the side just a little bit, sweetheart. 
I speak a blessing over you. I speak a blessing over you too. Lord, keep them, cover them. Let your angels guard them. Let your angels guard them. Day and night, Father, let the guardians watch over them. That's it. We see a move of God. We're going to see God move in every area. We're going to see God move. We're going to see God move. Heal her leg, Jesus. That's it. Take that, Mama. Yeah, the blessing. Take it all. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take it all. Take it all. That's it. I call you to prayer. I call you all to prayer. Every day. Every day. Just look at me, sweetheart. Take that. Victor? Lord, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. <sighs> worship you, Jesus. I worship you. <sighs> Take it all. Pray day and night. Masaka fafa. Take it all. <sighs> Now, I like the sound of it. Lift up your hands, Pastor. Take it all. Yeah. Yep. Birth, 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 birth. Birth it, birth it, birth it, birth it, birth it. Ashakota tasakata dasikete. Esitata zisi susasazu. Show for who for Papa DCCC. Oh, 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 I bless her, Father. Answer her prayers. Father, I thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we stand and hold fast. In Jesus' name. Come on, just begin to thank him. Just worship the king. Worship the Lord. Just right where you're at on the floor, if you're out crying, just everybody close your eyes.